I'm a long time player of the Souls series, having been one of the few people to actually get excited at the Demon Souls announcement in TGS back in the day, more than a year before it made it over to the US. Since then, I have witnessed many players get hooked in the series and many others return it out of sheer frustration, and perhaps a few Smash controllers, TVs, and split discs. I'm one of those players that has to relearn the game from zero via many deaths for each cycle, so I can relate to early game frustrations. With the wikis, we all collaborate to create a common body of knowledge that we can rely on as a shared notebook on what is where. But for launch day, I wanted to bring you my Dark Souls 3 Getting Started Guide for Seth, up for all ages and experience levels, and now with minimum spoilers. Choosing your class. This is not the end all. You can build your character any way you like, and only min maxes will care in detail. If you are new, the knight is often the best all rank class as it comes with a trusty longsword and a decent shield, and stats that can go any way you want it. Choosing your gift. There are only two gifts that are worthy, the fire gem and the light ring. If you are new to the series, pick the fire gem and imbue your weapon with this as soon as you can. You will do good damage for no stat investment and can focus on putting points into vitality, vigor, endurance, so you can learn to stay alive. Leveling stats. Your stat spread is an important part of the game and one that can be easily messed up when experimenting. The base builder stats will be important for weapon requirements and scaling, strength, dexterity, faith and intelligence. However, you cannot neglect endurance, vitality and vigor if you are uncertain of your optimized build, as you will need them for your stamina, equipment load and hit points. Additionally, there is a lack of stat that increases bleed and poison damage apart from item discovery, so you will likely have a hard time choosing a build. The good news is that you can respec both your stats and character appearance via this NPC 5 times per playthrough. Also, if you are a vet from the other games, be mindful that soft caps have moved and are no longer where you may think. Choosing your weapon Dark Souls 3 has more weapon variety than any other Souls games to date, simply because the skills of the weapons are so unique and diverse that they can really affect your gameplay. I encourage you to avoid diving into one specific build too early, as you will find more weapons and spells that you may want to try. If in doubt, research the wiki weapons page to find out requirements, skills and movesets that may interest you. To get you started, you can pick up a deep axe in the second game area. The extra damage from the infusion would surely help you versus stronger enemies while you try other moveses on weaker ones. You will also find the art of soul transposition interesting. Trade in boss souls to obtain weapons, spells and rings from the remains of the champions that you have defeated. Your defenses. Armor is not upgradable in Dark Souls 3, so you will have to find the right set for the right situation. You can also increase your resistance with rings, miracles and consumable pellets. You will want to consider if you are a roll or a shield person and look for the right mix to balance your equipment load. Weapon Upgrades As with Dark Souls 2, you will upgrade your weapon with regular titanate and then infuse it with special gems. What is new, however, is that there are 15 different infusions. Locked behind key items called coals, there is an infusion for every build in the spectrum. Some weapons upgrade with twinkling titanite or titanite scales and go only to plus 5, but they will all need precious titanite slabs to reach peak power, so choose wisely. Weapon infusions you cannot infuse bows, great bows, crossbows, chimes, talismans, staves, pyromancy flames, and any weapon that upgrades with twinkling titanite or titanite scales. A 
everything else will have the option to apply scaling benefits or physical or elemental damage. A clear overview of each infusion is provided on the upgrades page on the wiki and you can see individual numbers on each weapon page if you need. The Ash Estus Flask This new flask is automatically added once you pick it up and will likely go unused if you're not a caster, at least until you become familiar and comfortable using your weapon's skill. For this reason, my advice for beginners is to go to Blacksmith Andre and reallocate the flask to obtain more healing. You are unlikely to need to replenish your mana, but your health is certainly going to want it. Find the Estus Shards The item that increases the amount of flasks that you can carry. They are now an upgrade material that you can hand to Blacksmith Andre. You can check out the locations for Estus Shards on the wiki as you play to make sure that you don't miss any, as you will be happy to have more. Find the Undead Bone Shards The item that increases the amount of HP you regenerate when drinking Estus. You must bring and burn this item at the Far Link's Shrine Central Bonfire to upgrade your Estus performance in all regions. Check out the Undead Bone Shard locations in the wiki. NPCs like in previous games, you must find and talk to NPCs who are out in the field in order for them to facilitate their services to you at the Farling Hub. Make sure to explore areas thoroughly and revisit old areas to check if NPCs have moved in or around. You will have one default merchant, the Shrine Handmaid, who will also assist you in the event one of your NPCs meets an untimely end. Bring her ashes which you find out in the world or where a loved NPC die, and you can unlock items in her inventory that should help you get by. Exploration Dark Souls is all about exploring and finding shortcuts, mini-bosses and secret items. Killing optional but tougher enemies nets you powerful items, so don't run through and engage enemies to find what they are protecting or what they may drop. If you need area tips, we have maps to help you get by. Online play All online playing on the console platforms requires PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live subscriptions, including asynchronous ones like Bloodstains and Messages. If you have a subscription, you should buy a white sign soapstone from the Shrine Handmaid. She also sells you the dried finger, which allows you, on use, to break the normal 4 player limit on one wall and increase it to 6. That will be max 4 co op and 2 hostile. You must use an ember to be able to summon others and be invaded, but you can be summoned regardless of your ember status. An important note about matchmaking, it is done on soul level plus weapon upgrade level, meaning if your weapon is under plus 3, you will be matched with people in that category. This will prevent a degree of overpowered PvPers and summons interfering with your experience. You can bypass this limit by using a password, which will allow you to match with anyone and balance them down or up to your level damage. Combat Aim to have a good mix of 100% shield with the right elemental resistance for the zone you're in, rolling iframe rings, a fast and a heavy weapon, and a torch. Playing it safe and luring enemies out one by one with a bow or throwing knives is a legitimate strategy, as is luring large, scary enemies into smaller confinements so you can throw firebombs on their face until they die. Trust me, they would do this to you if they could. Having a bow and arrows for some areas with too many enemies is also a good idea, as you can thin them out before going to explore. Status effects Similar to Dark Souls 2, but with a few curveballs. The first is Curse, that would immediately kill you if the bar is filled. You do not respond with any further negatives. Secondly is Frostbite, 
that will remove health and slow stamina regeneration. You will also find an enemy who can reduce your health to zero without even touching you. And then there is bleed, that has a nasty effect from some specific enemies who apply leeches onto you. Keep a torch handy to equip and remove the worms. Finally, there is a story-centric mechanic obtained via the Dark Sigil called Hollowing. See its page for details. Covenants Dark Souls 3 Covenants revolve around multiplayer and are closer to Bloodborne in the sense that you can enter and leave them without penalty and on the fly. So you can obtain the items for all Covenants and join them and level them at your convenience. Of course, you will want to be mindful of side quests and how being in specific allegiance may affect them. Game progress. The game is relatively linear, however it is very easy to miss out on little things such as the trading crow or a certain mischievous returning character. If you want to do the best for your playthrough, we recommend you follow our game progress route and pay special attention to NPC questlines as many things are irreversible and can impede your progress in covenants and more. Also remember that New Game Plus will bring you items, enemies and opportunities to experiment with other questlines and endings. Stuck at a boss or area If you can't beat something, the best thing to do is become a white phantom for someone else. Go help other players and learn from them, experience the level without fear of invasions or loss of souls. And if you defeat bosses, you can amass souls rapidly and level up, making you stronger for your world challenge. You can use the wiki password Fextra to find help. If online is not an option, then returning to earlier zones to farm souls from easier enemies is always a viable way to improve your character and obtain more items to help you. You can also visit the wiki chat room or the Dark Souls 3 forums to ask for tips. So, these are my initial tips to get you started. Of course, you will need more in-depth assistance for details and that's where the wiki and community comes in. And please, feel free to share your extra tips on the comments or add them to the new player help page on the wiki.